Can you all see me, hear me, give me a thumbs up virally, let me know if we have any tech issues because we have a packed agenda today. I have to process some vegetables, I have to make some yotel dough for grandma, I have to tell you about what grandma was up to today, it is a story, get ready. Also, Aaron might make an appearance in a little bit, I will be making some grilled cheese for him, I'm going to be heating up some um, mysterious food that I won't explain too much because it'll be in the next Lidl haul video. I'm making an appearance <laughs> now hi, Aaron. because the BIOS is still updating. Yay! Say hi to your favorite boy. Hello, people who like me, and also hello people who don't, because you will eventually. Such confidence. Such confidence. Are there any chocolates you would like to try from the food show? Wow, they're all chocolates? Yeah, okay. but let them come to tent for a little what bit. What about sundry variety? Um, What's this? Those are the cheese sticks that I'll heat up for oh. you. Um, this is a cocoa nib disc that I think you can eat right now. It's so yes. thin. This is a uh, sesame seed butter white chocolate cup. Um, oh, and you're going to love this. This. Pumpkin waffle cone from Rocca. That's all you. Amazing, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Next year, June has promised she's going to try to sneak me in. Maybe. If, she, if you get an invite. If I get another invite. Will you still be a celeb 12 months from now? I don't know. If people still keep unfollowing me on Instagram, then no. Do you want people to unfollow you? I don't care, but you only get entry into this show by how many followers, you said? 20. 20,000. Mm -hmm. Right. So if people keep unfollowing me and I don't have 20,000 followers in a year, then I won't be able to. What's the perfect number of followers you want to have? But what, how is there a perfect number of followers? You decide. How many would you like if you could pick a number? That's a strange question. All right. Well, I asked it. Um, what do you guys think is the perfect number of Instagram followers to have for me? Not for anyone, just for my brand, what is the perfect number? I think 120K, I don't want more than that. How many people? Oh, why would you give this to me? Why? It's. Did you taste this? It's pumpkin. It's coconut. You bastard. It's one of the strongest coconut flavor things I've tasted. This is why I don't give you free shit, because you complain about it all it's the time. It's so coconut. Taste it. You don't notice. I tasted the pumpkin, not the coconut. I'm sorry for poisoning you. This is what you miss, right? I got some cauliflower for a dollar each, uh, but it turns out they are not very good, so I'm slicing off some of the tougher bits into my compost. Um, however many followers it takes to make an influencer an actual job. I mean, you can be a micro-influencer, which I think I technically am, but I'm really trying to make my brand a defluencer. Um, I want to be a defluencer, y'all. I want to be the very best defluencer. Freddie is not around. Freddie is with Aaron at Aaron's apartment. So this is actually a great question. This was a point of contention at a party that I was at. Okay. Um, is YouTube social media? Chime in. Let me know what you think. social media because you can interact with people on it, right? It's not just a video platform, but it is first and foremost a video platform, but you leave comments. You interact with the creators, you interact with other people who watch these videos. It's even YouTube says it's a community. So um, I say it's social media for sure. It is 
It is literally social and media. Correct. Correct. So one of these cauliflowers I am going to cook. The other one I am going to salt and uh, make some pickles out of. And I'm going to show you what I'll make pickles of it with. But one thing at a time. Interesting. Is email social media? I never thought about it that way, but sure, yeah. I don't disagree. It certainly can be. Um, how's everyone's long weekend? How many of you have this holiday off today? shorts is very toxic I think shorts can be very toxic and I think the algorithm encourages you to create very toxic shorts I think there's been a lot of weird stuff going on to shorts like a lot of very incel shit a lot of like homophobic shit a lot of transphobic shit a lot of racist shit we're definitely gonna get demonetized for this live now um, what's going on YouTube shorts yeah they serve up a lot of uh, very bigoted content. Yeah, the algorithm the algorithm just obviously seeks engagement. So if it's shit that gets you watching either because you love it or you hate it, it doesn't matter. So it's only controversial shit? Uh, it often tends to be because that's what drives engagement the most. Um, and they also really love commenting. So even if you see something, you know, if you see something hateful and you comment in the bottom, like, hey, this is bad, you know, don't hate people or whatever. YouTube's just going to show that to more people because you commented. Because YouTube sees, oh, people love this. People are commenting. We're getting engagement. And then that just, you know, it's a vicious cycle. Amy wants you to show her your new tattoos. If I don't. You want. I I don't have a any extremely new ones. If they haven't seen you in a long time, Aaron. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't care. They're there. Come, come look at my body in person if you want to see Wow, it. invitation to Aaron's body in real life. What Patreon tier is that? Uh, no, just no tier, just anyone can just show up in my apartment and I'll show you my body. Not in a sexual way, you know, you can just, you know, view it like an art museum. Okay. Yeah. Where is nice for you from, June? What brand is nice for you? It's Dwayne Reed's generic nice. brand. Did you get a good price? You always talk about your oak prices. Um, What's it's, two pounds, ten ounces going for these days? It's four dollars each, but you have to buy two, so it's two okay. for eight dollars. Okay. I don't pay attention to prices because I just buy whatever Trader Joe's has. I assume that anything Trader Joe's sells is not going to be exorbitantly more expensive than the normal. So I just stop thinking about it and do that. Cool. That's Great. a nice. That's a nice way to live. Nobody's ever going to go broke shopping at Trader Joe's, you know. That's it not might, true. It might not always be the cheapest, but it's never going to be like. I don't crazy. think that's true, Aaron. What do you mean? There's definitely people who like buy way too much shit when they go to Trader Joe's. Like snacks. Yeah. Anything. People like spend insane amounts of money. You mean waste, like waste food? Like they buy it and then throw it out? No, but I'm just saying you can spend a lot of money at Trader Joe's. I mean, you could, yes, by like loading up your cart with a trillion things, but that, I don't think that's about, you know, how much per unit it costs. It's just you spend a lot of money. Mm. Have you missed the people? I don't read, I don't look at the comments, so I don't, it's almost like there's nobody here anyways, because it's not like I'm paying attention to what they're saying. I know, but have you missed being a part of a live? No, but I don't not miss it either. I'm ambivalent about it. Okay. Well, um, try this one then. This is safe. It's not coconut. I believe okay. it's Italian. 
and um, it's a new genre. Actually, these are all Italian, and they all have some sort of nuts and fondant and uh, ganache in them. Is this a new job? Yes, it is a new job. Okay. You like new jobs? I do. Good. This one's good. It's I don't know what's fancy about it, because it just tastes like something that you know a fancy hotel might have in their lobby for guests. Well, why is a fancy hotel fancy? She got me there. Oh, it was good. The middle, the middle taste is, the is very almondy. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I figured you like the European chocolates. Mm -hmm. Are you making me grilled cheese? I am making your, grilled cheese. This is how is this how Grandma's home serves the bread, is individually wrapped in a plastic bag for a slice. I assume this is Grandma's. Correct. Right. Amazing. Because she complains when they don't give her stuff that they give her neighbors, but then she never eats them, so the bread just molds on mm -hmm. her desk. So I learned to start taking them home after two days. Do you always, uh, I don't mean vent in a judgy way, I mean in a neutral way. Do you always vent about um, grandma and the lies or not? Yes, because people ask for grandma updates and I like giving a real, a realistic depiction of what it means to live with a 95 year old woman. Right. Did you tell her the uh, police station story? Not yet, but that's coming up y'all. As <laughs> soon as I get this cauliflower butchered, you'll hear about- Buckle in for this one. <laughs> oh my God. It was not fun these last two days. Um, there is a grandma story coming up for you, but I'm gonna try to process this cauliflower first and not chop off my hands because uh, it's going bad and I need to make it now. But as soon as I have the cauliflower done, I'll be right with you with my undivided, mostly attention. Um, Would you ever eat a grilled cheese with sweet corn on it? I guess. Why not? I would love to eat a grilled cheese that's made with cornbread. I think that sounds amazing. Um, if anybody wants to make that. Ready for grandma story time. Basically, Yesterday was Sunday, and Sunday is a day out of the entire week where the Jackson Heights Farmer's Market um, is held. And our usual tradition with Grandma is to walk her to the Farmer's Market on Sundays. I drop off my compost at the compost bins. I take a walk around, I buy some apples, and then we walk back. Yesterday, I go in, she is fine eating her dumplings, And then I'm in the bathroom washing her little meal containers and I hear her talking to my uncle and she's talking to my uncle and complaining and she's complaining about how somebody stole grandpa's army medallions, basically stuff that he had had to wear, I guess, when he went into war and shit for the Red Army in China. And I was like, oh yeah, grandma said this so many times before, but you know, I know where these little medallions are. They're in a bag in her closet because 
she's asked me for them before and I've shown it to her. And I was like, Grandma, they're not lost. Don't worry about it. And she's like, no, I saw it with my own eyes. They took it. And I was like, who is they? And she was like, you know, the people. They always mess around my closets and take my clothes. And she got really, really fired up. Um, and I was like, what is wrong? And she was like, just open the closet. They took all the clothes. And I'm here trying to open her closet, which by the way, has two little knobs for the door handles that she always ties tightly with string. And I couldn't even untie them. And I'm like, grandma, even I can't untie this shit. Like really, who stole it? And she was like, just open it, just cut it. And then she handed me her pair of scissors that she uses for sewing. And she instructed me to cut it open. So I go ahead, I cut her little strings open and um, I open the closet up and her clothes are pretty much all there. I mean, I guess I wouldn't know for sure if one or two pieces went missing. And I'm like, grandma, look, all of your clothes are here. I don't know what you're talking about. And she's like, they, these are all old clothes. They took all the new clothes. And I'm like, what new clothes? Like you have three new clothes, two of which you immediately altered and um, like ruined basically because she always liked to cut the waists of new pants open and like sew new shit onto them so that they fit her better except they didn't really need to go through that process to fit her better they fit her fine before and i just i could just tell that she's not going to accept my reality and i was just like i don't know what to do um because here's everything for you and do you want me to look for grandpa's medallions now and she's like they're not there i saw them with my own eyes that they were taken to the police station and i'm like what police station and she was just like the police they were here they took it and i was like okay and she was like we need to go to the precinct to retrieve it and i was like I don't know where this precinct is. I've lived in this neighborhood for seven years now. I don't know where the precinct is. And she was like, they were just downstairs the other day, which isn't wrong because one day there was like a police van downstairs. So maybe she saw that. But then I realized later, grandma doesn't even know what American police cars look like. I've never explained to her what the different cars are. I mean, maybe she's figured it out. But as far as I know, grandma doesn't even know what a police car looks like in America. And then I was like, okay, there's, there's something going on here. So I'm just gonna try to distract her. So I said, grandma, do you want to take our walk? It's Sunday, do you wanna walk? And she's like, if you're not gonna help me, you might as well just leave. And she got kind of like hostile about it. And I was like, is that really what you want? You don't want to go for your walk? And she's like, you're not helping me. So just leave. I don't need you here. So I left. I left early yesterday. Um, and I was hoping that by the time I went back today, she would have like forgotten all about it. Oh no, babies. She did not forget about this. Um, she, as soon as I stepped out of the elevator today, I heard her crying. Um, and saying, why won't they give me back my husband's stuff? And I'm just like bracing myself at this point for the day. And boy, oh boy, did it really just decline into one of the worst days I've ever spent with grandma. I walk in, I'm like, grandma, what's wrong? And she was like, you need to take me to the police precinct. We need to get my, my husband's stuff. Um... And I was like, but granddad's medallions are here. And she was like, I saw it with my own eyes. Don't tell me that you know more than I do what I'm going through. And I was like, fuck it. Let's open up the fucking closet and just move everything out and get the medallions out. I don't know how long it's gonna take to move all the shit out of her closet, but let's just do it because she's obviously not forgetting about this. And I'm gonna show her that the medallions are here. I go through the closet, I take everything out, I proceed to throw out one box of extremely expired medication that I don't wanna keep around anymore. And by the way, at this point, my mental health is like dipping. 
I'm reaching the end of my energy levels already, just talking with grandma about this. And so I'm pretty pissed. So I just throw this shit out because it's expired and she's never gonna use it because she's had it for a year and a half now and she's never used it. And then she flips out and she says, how can you just throw away my stuff like that? My daughter left that for me. And by the way, my mom did not leave that medication for her. It's just, my mom is a hoarder. And so she hoarded all this medication that she never got to use. And, but grandma in her mind, I'm the villain now. I'm not helping her retrieve grandpa's stuff from the police station. I'm throwing out her shit and I'm getting angry with her, right? So I'm the villain now. So she starts saying, how could you treat me like this? You're not my relative anymore. You're not family to me anymore. Um, you're throwing out my daughter's things that she left for me. And I'm just losing it. And finally, I find granddad's memorabilia and I show it to her and she's like, these are not it. These are small. The ones I'm thinking he carried on his shoulders and his back and they're big. And I know I had them because I packed them myself when I came from Beijing to New York. And I was like, literally, I cleaned out mom's entire house by myself. I did not see those things. And if I had seen it, I would have given them to you, grandma. And she's like flipped. She's, I've never seen her this pissed at me. Um, she's like grabbing the little medallions out of my hands as I'm trying to unravel it from the tissue paper that she's wrapped them in to give them to her. She's like snatching it out of my hands and she's, saying shit like, don't touch my stuff. Why are your hands on my stuff? These are my things. Um, and uh, so then I was just like, all right, take care of it. Cause once I give them to you now, I'm not gonna take them back. And if you lose them again, it's not my responsibility anymore. I've been holding onto them for you. At this point, she's not listening to me anymore. She's just like freaking out. My uncle's on Skype, he's witnessing all of this. And this, this time the nurse comes in and she's like telling me that she has to change grandma's bed sheets, but grandma's been refusing to leave the bed. So she hasn't been able to change grandma's bed sheets. And is there any way that we can move grandma's mountain of shit off the bed? She didn't use those words. Those are my words. The nurses are very nice at her place off her bed so that she can finally, you know, like change the bed sheets. So I'm like trying to calm myself down gearing myself up to try to like get grandma to go on a walk so this poor nurse can actually do her job um and i'm just like okay grandma do you want to go to the police precinct let's go to the police precinct let's get you dressed and we're going to go to the police precinct okay and obviously you and I both know that I don't know where the fuck the police precinct is. And my mentality yesterday was, I can't take her on this walk because I literally don't know where the police precinct is. So even if I told her I'm gonna take her there, she's going to freak out once she realizes I've lied to her about knowing where the police precinct is. But today I'm just like, as long as I get her out of this room, at least I can make the nurse happy because I'm allowing her to do her job. So I just basically said, grandma, let's get you dressed. Let's go on a walk. Um, let's go to the police precinct. So we get her out. She goes outside. She's like a lot calmer now. And as soon as we go outside, I'm like, okay, grandma, I'm going to need you to help me find the police precinct because I've lived here a long time and I've never seen it. And you, you told me that you went to the police precinct by yourself. So you know how to go there, right? Oh, I forgot that part of the story. She said she went on her own. To the cops? Well, her story keeps changing. That's the thing. How did she get there? <laughs> yesterday, she told me that she was at the precinct and she saw with her own eyes granddad's stuff at what, the precinct. What goes on in the mind of someone at that age? Right. It's just constant, just like dreams, of waking dreams, basically? Right. So I'm like, okay, Grandma, you said you were there, so can you take me there? And she was like, well, I don't know how to get there. And I was like, but you said you were there, so how did you get there? And she was like, oh, um, I saw the precinct from my window. And I was like, you saw the precinct from your window and you saw inside the precinct where granddad's stuff was? And she was like, yeah, I saw two rows of bags with stuff and granddad's stuff was in one of those rows of stuff. And I was like, okay, why don't we just walk in that direction and you can tell me if you see something that looks like the precinct as we walk. Is that okay? And so we, we walk, we keep walking, 
and it's really hot today, guys. It's like you go outside and you're sweating. The sun is really hot and strong. And grandma is like, oh no, it's so hot today. And I'm like, yeah, it's summer, grandma. Um, and she was like, I can't handle this heat. I need to get out of this heat right now. And I was like, do you want to go back or do you want to go to the precinct? And she was like, can we take a, a, like a shady road? So I'm like, okay, let's keep walking until we find shade. And finally we find shade. I'm like, do you want to stay here? Or do you want to keep walking to the precinct? And she was like, I don't know where the precinct is. And I was like, well, we can keep walking until you see something that looks like the precinct. And I think at this point, because of the heat and how much she doesn't like the heat, her mind is like trying to turn around and be like, how do I get myself out of this situation? Um, and uh, I leave her in the shade because she said she wants to be in the shade. And then I start talking with uncle about all that's happened because keep in mind, uncle is still on the sky at this point. Um, and then grandma immediately like slumps in her wheelchair. Um, grandma like loses her energy level. I think she's finally reached the end of her like outburst episode. She's lost gas in a lot of ways. Um, and, uh, She's really quiet. She gets really quiet. Are you looking for food? No, that one? Uh, less. Right here. Water. In the middle. Um, I also have a plum wine if you want any on the door. No, I was ideally looking for seltzer, but you don't buy seltzer. Correct, I don't buy seltzer. You just wait till you're in my place and steal it. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, eventually, Grandma signals to me and she was like, can we go back now? And I was like, okay, do you want to continue looking for the precinct or are you, are you tired and you want to go back? And she was like, I don't know what happened to my brain. Like, I don't, I don't understand how it is that I was in my bed and I saw the precinct and I saw the yard that the precinct was in and I saw all these bags. I don't, I can't figure out how my, how, what's wrong with my brain? And I was like, it's okay, Grandma. That's normal. And right now I'm trying to normalize this for her, right? Because it's clear that she's realized, she's begun to be conscious of the fact that, like, she's experienced an impossible thing. Um, so You're I'm not going to logic her out of crazy. So I said, it's okay, Grandma. It happens sometimes, you know? We want something so much that we imagine that it's there. And then I lead her through a breathing exercise as we're walking. I said, the most important thing is your body. How does your body feel right now? She was like, my body is okay, but I don't know what's wrong with my mind. And I was like, it's okay. Let's take care of the body first. So then we do some breathing exercises and um, we're walking and we're breathing and I'm doing a body scan with her and telling her to send her breath through all the body parts. And she comments about how, oh, I can actually feel my knees moving and my toes moving. And I was like, that's great, Grandma. And we're walking. And then her mind goes back to, well, I don't know how my brain is doing that. Like, I don't know what's wrong with my brain. Um, and I said to her, well, Grandma, I think what it sounds like is you miss Granddad, right? You miss him so much that you tried to bring him back. And because you can't really bring him back, you wanted to bring back his thing. His thing, the military kind of paraphernalia, is a representation of grandpa, and so, you know, you tried to bring back his thing, but his thing doesn't exist because he doesn't exist, because granddad's gone, but you miss him, so you wanted his things. Um, but the reality is, granddad is gone, and so are his things, um, and, it's okay, this is normal. And I think she finally like, she's both tired and tuckered out at this point and realizing that her reality is not real, which is really frightening. Um, and we got back to her room and the bed is changed and cleaned and I give her back all her things so she can make it a mess again. And I guess we'll do this again someday with maybe not granddad's thing, but some other thing that she assumes other people have stolen from her. But that's my story. Thank you for listening. Um, 
that was my Monday and Tuesday with grandma. And uh, yeah, that's that. I have uh, well, wanted to uh, just update you Yes. When, whenever you're ready. On the computer? Yeah, come whenever you have a chance. Okay. I'll be back guys. Aaron's here trying to figure out what's wrong with my computer because my monitor keeps shutting down, but I'll be right back. Yeah, so I updated everything, updated BIOS. freaking out about <laughs> everybody's like so worried about your never mind it doesn't matter what what are they worried about you you don't read the comments so i'm not going to read the comments what are they, what what are you saying about what are you worried about me what did i do <laughs> oh jason loves you what are they worried about say it now i now i gotta know I, some people are just super critical oh, of just, you what, of our dynamic they don't like me they don't like me? Yeah, there was one comment that was like, does anybody think that Aaron's bad for June's mental health? Oh. Guys, he's Who just here for a visit. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> I, th I thought I thought it was something specific that I was, that, uh, it's not, if you just don't like me, I can, I can easily live with that. In fact, I prefer it. Aaron, you stole Jason's heart. Thank you. Jason, by the way, is our um, live stream husband. We're all what? his wives. Oh, okay. Yeah. In a, in a, in a harem way. Yeah. In a parasocial virtual harem okay. way. Okay. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Yes, I'm getting all literally all positive comments right now. So Great. I think there was just one hater. And if I if I didn't have at least one hater, then I'd be doing something wrong. Right. right. You wouldn't be real, right? Yeah. I just want you guys to know that Aaron continues to be my number one tech support. <laughs> also, we are still kind of co-parenting Fred, but not really. I, I guess. You're, you'd be there if you needed to. If I if I were needed, I would be. I think I've been relegated from Fred's mom to Fred's aunt now, but I'm actually kind of Fred's frenemy. I don't think Freddie likes me anymore. It's kind of heartbreaking. That might be the toughest pill to swallow for me is that my cat whom I truly did love but does not care for me anymore um but such is life we move on and by the way I don't want you to think I'm the best granddaughter always I got into such a screaming fight with grandma because I just completely lost it I basically um, there was that one point where I had to close the door because our fighting had gotten so verbally loud that I didn't want it to affect the other residents as much. And grandma freaks out when I close the door because she thinks I'm trying to suffocate her by closing off circulation to her room. Meanwhile, she's still yelling at me full force because, you know, that's definitely something that somebody who's suffocating does. 
Um, and she was like, you're trying to kill me. And I just lost it. I was like, yeah, I am trying to kill you. I hope that you die now. Can you die now? Um, so, you know, I'm not a great granddaughter. I'm not like a perfect human being, but I said what I said. And for better or for worse, I meant it. When I said it, I meant it. And I think it's because grandma's responsibility has really been weighing on me. It's been affecting my social life. Um, it's been affecting my ability to think about taking trips for myself, taking trips professionally. It's been really limiting for me. There is a sense of caring for grandma as an extension of always reminding me of my mom's death because I wouldn't be in this situation if my mom weren't dead. And that brings up a lot of psychological and emotional baggage for me as well. Um, but I said what I said and uncle was there to witness it all. And, um, you know, he was like, I've been there. Like I've been at moments where it's so hard to deal with grandma that I wanted to bash my own head against the wall. And so I'm actually really glad that I said it out loud, all of those thoughts that I've been trying to keep in because I think it's just healthier to let them go. I can acknowledge that I want grandma dead, not because I want her dead, but because it's just been really stressful for me. And also it seems to me that she's not happy being alive a lot of the times, but she is also terrified of death because who wouldn't be? But this is the reality of life. It's really hard and I would rather say it than not. And I said it and then I cried while sifting through her closet as everything avalanche down um, and it was really cathartic for me to realize at that point that like I had been holding in a lot of shit that I couldn't really express up until today. So in a lot of ways, here's what I told uncle. I said, every day visiting grandma is a life lesson for me. Every day I get to observe something about her. Every day I get to learn something about myself, about my mom, about my family dynamics, about my own psychology. And if I continue to frame these visits to grandma as something that I do for my mental health, I can take it at a more sustainable pace. If I frame it as, oh, I have to do this because it's my responsibility and duty as her only living relative in the US, I'm gonna be so resentful more resentful than I already am. And I'm trying to really tame it. Um, and I'm so thankful that all the nurses at her facility are so understanding because goddamn, we were allowed today. Um, and I even had a laugh with the nurse as I was heading out today. I was like, dude, grandma is driving me nuts and it's only Monday and I don't know how you do this. And she was like, yeah, my job is not for everyone. And I was like, you need to be paid six times as much as you are now. And she was like, uh-huh, <laughs> I do. Um, and so having said all of that, I think was good for me. I'm really glad that I had this opportunity to fight with grandma and to express all of these things that I've been repressing to her, to her face. Um, and I'm glad that I can see her in her most vulnerable state now, realizing that she cannot rely on her own reality. Um, because it truly takes that moment for me to understand just how terrifying it is to live as my grandma. And it enables me to not feel so bothered by her reality because um, I don't really have a choice now but to feel so much more compassion for my grandma. Um, to, to understand that to be that old and to not be able to rely on your own senses, to understand how terrifying and exhausting it is, to feel like everyone's always against you, not because they are, but because you think they are, and you think a lot of things that might or might not be true. I don't know guys, it's really terrifying and it's really giving me a lot of gratitude um, that I haven't gotten there yet. And it's also given me a lot of life care clarity that I don't want to ever get there. And so I'm living my life in a very different way now, um, at least in terms of my mentality, just in terms of this societal um, prioritization of longevity. I can see now from experiencing this caretaking journey with grandma that longevity is not all that we make it out to be. It is a terrifying, terrifying 
thing to age um, to the point where you don't recognize your reality. And so, I don't know, that's my story. I'm sure I will get a lot of hate comments after this, and I'm sure I will get a lot of understanding, supportive comments from people who can accept that this is just some people's truths. I'm sure we all come from different cultures and backgrounds, and we all come from different generations, and we all come from different life paths with different family dynamics and just different situations and mentalities. And so I accept it all. I'm not the best person. I'm also not the worst person. I am probably a relatively real person, and I'm also a relatively reactive person. I wish I didn't lash out at my grandmother, but I did, and I don't regret lashing out at, her, at my grandmother because that's just all I'm capable of doing, um, and that's what I did. I came back after seeing grandma, and I had the rest of the call with my uncle debriefing the whole experience today, and I said to my uncle, like, mom never got a chance to walk away from grandma. That's why she went crazy. Because even in just an hour and a half, which is how long I spent with grandma today, I went crazy. I finally brought myself down to earth after realizing that I had a job to do, which was to get her out of her room so that the nurse can change her bed sheets. But it is wildly hard to deal with someone 24 seven. Um, and I said to my uncle, you know, I often think about the time when my mom, in the summer before she died, asked me to go live with her. And I often think about the fact that maybe mom would still be alive had I complied and went to live with her. But I, I told him, it took me a year to realize that at the time, I told my mom I wouldn't go live with her because at the time, I realized what my dynamic with my mom was. And I made that decision at that time because I knew that if I had gone to my mom's and lived with her, we would have driven each other crazy within two days. And not only would I not have been able to save her, I would have made things worse probably between her and grandma, between me and mom, and between me and grandma. It would have been potentially more of a shit show. So what's the point in thinking about all the what ifs, you know? Um, because we choose what we choose at any given time because that is the best option available to us at the time. Any other time after that decision has been made, I am no longer me. You have seen me change since my mom's death. You've acknowledged how much difference exists within me now. And so the me now thinks about how much salvation could have come about me complying with mom's request to go live with her. But the me then would not have been able to have seen any of this, understood any of this, and done anything better than what I did when I was back then. So this is me learning how to love fate, right? The Latin phrase being amor fati. You must love your fate and you must live in such a way that you do not fear repeating it over and over again to infinity. So that is always the toughest thing to do because we can't predict who we will be in the future. But we can try to be honest with ourselves in the moment. Um, and that's what I'm trying to do now. I have all these regrets about my mom dying, about not being good enough to her, about not being nice enough to her, about not having a better relationship with her. But at the end of the day, she's dead, right? And I'm still taking care of grandma, no matter how many fights we get into, I'm still taking care of her. All the while, she was fighting with me today, and I was yelling at her today. She was saying things like, you never care about me, you don't do anything for me. And I'm like, oh, so you don't want these dumplings now? You don't want these oranges that I brought for you today? You don't want the you don't want these donuts, right? And she was like, well, if I don't take the donuts, what am I gonna eat? And I'm like, okay, so here you go, here's the donuts. But I don't do anything for you, right, Grandma? Um, 
Um, so, in dealing with grandma, I am learning how to separate my ego from a lot of my actions. Um, because the ego is a very heavy thing to carry. And I actually think doing these live streams for the past two years have really helped me finesse that skill of separating my ego, which is why I thank all the comments that come through, especially um, the critical ones sometimes because they help me analyze myself in such a way not in terms of how valid the comments are about reflecting on my goodness or my badness, but about why I am so reactive to comments that criticize me. I got your CPU cooler and faster. Wow. I did some bias tweets. Do the best music. Enable 105 watt uh, PBO Eco Mode for uh, Ryzen 7000. Sure, let's do that. Sounds great to me. I got a lot of carrots because it was either $3 for two pounds or three fifty for five pounds. So I bought five pounds of carrots. What are you going to do with all those carrots? I'm going to pickle some of them. What are you going to do with all those carrots? All those carrots inside your... No. Oh, there's a baby one. A baby. It's a baby carrot. You uh, want it? Look. Oh, you can't see it. There you go. Bye, bye. Korean person is excited to be witnessing the person you're becoming. Who are you becoming? Uh, I don't know yet, but hopefully someone who is a lot more calm. <laughs> So Aaron was wrong with the coconut? What was I wrong with? I'm not wrong, it says it right here. Um, literally, coconut appears multiple times on this list. The third ingredient is coconut milk powder, and the fourth ingredient is coconut oil. My bad. Yeah. I thought pumpkin spice, and I was like, oh, Aaron will love this, but... Now it's coconut spice. <sighs> I'm sorry. It's okay. So I'm gonna salt some of these vegetables and I'm gonna pickle some of them, then I'm gonna cook some of them. Can I get to your grilled cheese in about 20 minutes? Uh, I was, I might have dinner with somebody tonight. Okay, so. let me make it now then. Thank you, I do have to get back to Manhattan. I see. At some point. I did not know you were on such a tight schedule. I'm not really, visiting me. it's not set in stone, the time. But I just, you know, wanted to keep my eyes. Where are you guys going? I don't know, I'm trying to figure that out. I usually always know where to go. But she says she doesn't want uh, fried, like heavy food, fried food. Okay, no fried food. Yeah. Is this the brunch spot? Uh, we're not doing brunch, she's just a dinner spot. Okay. Alright, did you want to try the goat, the cured goat cheese that we got from Lidl's on that shopping trip? Lidl's. Lidl's. Yes. Did you want to try a plant-based cheese and give the people your review? Okay. Show the people. Tell, tell them how much I, how much it sucks. Yeah, tell them how much it sucks. Okay. Show the people what it is. It's plant ahead, which is a bit of a pun, I guess. Um, it's in the triangle shape, sort of like those. What is that brand that does the triangle snack bite cheeses? Uh, Laughing Cow. Laughing Cow. It's sort of like Laughing Cow. Okay. What's the main? It doesn't have an ingredient here. I'm gonna guess cashew or. I don't know. It smells like, it smells like literally nothing. It smells like ice. <laughs> so. <laughs> mm hmm. Okay. It's you, extremely grease. It's extremely oily. Like there's a. Well, that's all vegan cheese is, is oil. There's a thick coating of like, it's almost slipping out of my hand how greasy yeah, it is. Yeah, you don't need to finish it. I just want you to give the people a. Yeah, my first impression wildly oily and greasy. That's um, not gross. It is. The taste is not as bad as I expected. Okay. Um, if you can get over the fact that it t that it feels like you're drinking motor oil in your mouth, um, it does taste vaguely, it does, it tastes like... Um, motor oil. Yeah, it's like, it's very slick like motor oil, the whole thing. Well, trash bin's right there. 
You don't want the rest? Definitely not. I have so mm. much normal cheese to eat. Why would I want that? Mm. The taste isn't bad, though. It tastes like a sort of... Yeah, it's just a... I don't even... I'm trying to find a cheese to compare it to. It's just sort of like a cheese... It's a cheese-ish flavor. In a, yeah. It's, it's kind of like approximating Laughing Cow in flavor. I can see that. You're still down for caramelized onions? Definitely. Okay. Do you want to pick a spice to go into your sand though? I have very many peppers over oh, there. Oh, you've got, a, you've got tons. Did you have one in mind? What? Did, when you were thinking about making grilled cheese, did you, did you have one? No, I just want, I wanted you to choose whatever spices you wanted. You know, I really don't think I've had a single good vegan cheese at all. I agree. Have you, Aaron, had a single no. good vegan cheese? No. I obviously, I've been on record in supporting the idea of vegan food, but they should give up. It's giving vegan food a bad name. Just like, just pretend cheese doesn't exist and cook other things, is my advice to vegans. Somebody likes, Napo likes Kite Hill Chai. Okay. Real cheese. Yeah, that's, this is a cured goat cheese that you'll see in the cured legal. Goat. From my favorite country! Yes! I didn't notice it was from there. Turkey? Mm -hmm. No. What's your favorite country? Portugal. Oh, Portugal. I don't know what Portugal is in Portuguese, but that's what I'm going with. Mmm. Oh, interesting. Is it cured? What do you mean you tasted it? Yeah, I don't think it was cured. It's very lightly cured. Um, I was good. It's a almost. It's a bit of a. Was it stored by like raspberries or something? It almost has a fruity flavor to Interesting. it. Interesting. No. Mm hmm. I would actually like this to be a little more cured, a little saltier. Same, same. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the goat cheese is solid. I do think the. I think they cured it enough to take away a lot of the weird a lot of the tang of goat cheese that weirds people out it's probably the most mild goat cheese i've tasted in that this. in that goatiness um but yeah i could go for if you're gonna cure something you should fully cure it you heard it here first folks if you're gonna cure something you should fully cure it yep. did you make jardinara or are you doing that now oh i made it already oh yeah you promised some. me that So I have pieces of cauliflower, carrot, and apple, oh. and hot bell pepper in here. So um, this, by the way, is on the Burlap and Barrel site. So if you guys want to check out the recipe, it's available for you. Yeah, Zara, I've always said that about vegan and vegetarian food, is they are weakest when they try to imitate um, non-vegan food. They should just own, like in the great way that Indian food does it, you know, own being non-meat in ways that are already proven and good. Because for people like me who want to eat as little meat as possible, but have spent my whole life eating the rich, delicious, amazing varieties of, uh, you know, dairy and meat foods out there, I know exactly what good shit tastes like. So when I go to the vegetarian or vegan stuff, it's such a you know, let down when they try to imitate shit in a bad way. It's like, especially depressing for me. So yeah, just, just go play your strengths. Just pretend cheese doesn't exist. Yeah. Yes? Looks like it could be sold in Parrot with a label from Macedonia or whatever. Parrot has great pickles, but I honestly think these might be some of the best. We'll ever. see about that. Do I, those are whole peppercorns in there? Yeah, but they probably soften by now. Okay, do you eat them? I do. All right. I'm trying to swim them off a little bit because I actually want to keep them in the jar. June is boldly putting whole peppercorns. Okay. 
This is the pickling spice. This is the pickling starter that you were staring at on my desk. So this spice was made for pickling, but it also grinds great um, as a, there you go. Okay. You can try it in front. Oh, wait, let me give you this apple. Yes. Can you pick that up please, Aaron? Okay. Thank you. Pickled apple. You did it again. What did I do? Yeah, this is amazing. The apple or everything? Everything. This is better jardinara, or just mixed pickled veg, because I don't really know exactly what that means. Jardinara is olive oil and vinegar together. Oh, that's yes. why it's a bit what like. Correct. Yeah. This is uh, better than any I've had in a store, yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you have it. If you want to make the best jardinara ever, Make your own. Mm-hmm. Better than any commercial product, and I love the treatment of the whole peppercorns. Wow, this is, this is pro. This is like, this is something Brad would do. You comparing me to Brad? I am comparing you positively to Brad. It's almost like June is also a food celebrity. No, I wouldn't say so. But let me heat up a cheese stick for you. No, you just need a Philly accent, oh, a Pittsburgh accent. June, this was, that was so good. Do you want more? I'm gonna drink the liquid. Do you want more? Mm. Maybe I'll have it. On, I'll have it on my grilled cheese, right? I don't think I can fit this on your grilled cheese okay. without it falling. I'll out. have it next to the grilled cheese ones, though. Yeah. Yeah, the botulism guy. He's comparing me to the botulism guy, y'all. Oh. Maybe you are toxic, Aaron. <laughs> JK, he, JK, didn't, JK. he didn't actually give people bottles, did he? He told people how to make stuff in a way that could inhibit All right, it. well, unless you show me one person who actually got sick from it, I don't care. If people are just angry about what theoretically could have happened... But then. he's making... He's using his platform to teach people how to pickle. And he's had, like, a trillion episodes. He's not going to be perfect through all of them. Okay. Sure. Have you ever made a mistake? We make in mistakes. Your, sure. In your, in your uh, videos? Sure, sure, sure. All right. But I'm known for making mistakes. That's kind of my brand, Aaron. Have you, have you killed anybody? Yeah. I probably have killed someone, <laughs> yeah. But they're not here to live to tell right. the tale. That's the nice thing about killing me. Correct. They can't cancel you for that. Correct. Good. I'm warming up some caramelized onions, and I'm going to put the onions on top of the cheese, which will help the cheese melt even faster. Amazing. Now, that, is in, that has got to be... I don't have a ranked list. It's not like I have a list anymore, but that's definitely in the top 10 things for me at least you've ever made. Wow. Mm -hmm. The Jardinera? Yeah. He's eaten a lot of my shit. I have. I've eaten, I've eaten June's shit for over a decade. Um, I wasn't cooking for all of those years. Sure. What, what did, were you eating like in 2014? You were eating like literally oats, but you were eating the same shit, but you weren't cooking. You were eating oats and peanut Right. Yeah. I remember that because June and I would go to supermarkets and she would get so excited when she saw the Quaker man for like 99 cents or whatever. He was never 99 cents. Well, but yes. Well, that's what you were eating 2014 ish, right? Have your uh, tastes changed over the last 10 years? Oh, like, yeah. Is there any shit you eat now that you say olives. olives? Yeah. I hated olives before. I also was pretty, like, eating disordered, so I didn't eat a lot of fats. Like, I remember you would cook me stuff, and they would have a lot of olive oil on them, and I would be, like, really queasy about eating it because I was so fat-phobic. And then you were, and then you famously loved the cherries with olive oil. Yeah. 
So is this recipe somewhere? Yeah, on the burlap and barrel site. Oh, nice. That's probably what makes it too, so good too. It's so really good yeah, the, the pickling starter. Mm when she did budget eats do you remember i have a terrible memory i don't know uh with, do you know what i i mean the the all i remember off the top of my head were there was those crackers you made that i love aaron loves the sourdough crackers that were almond meal based in the christmas episode and he hated the he hated the coconut milk based crepes that i made because it was coconut he gagged he had to spit that shit out um I would recommend this green one. It has different nut butters. Yeah, but that's just my preference is the coconut thing. I was wondering if there's any... It was pretty gross. Oh. It was, it was a failed experiment, and it was pretty gross. Period. You, even you thought it was gross. Yeah. I mean, everyone saw how gross it was. That was the whole point of Budgie Eats, so... Yeah, I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I'm sure there's been so much I did love, but I don't know. I have a terrible memory, so... so. Just watch the episodes again. Give give Ernest more of that uh, YouTube money so you can check which I which I just found out today that people have been downloading my right. videos. I download YouTube videos too when I travel. Really? To watch Why? On the plane. To watch on the plane. I see. Yeah. Okay, pick yourself a plate from up here. And you'll get to eat this in approximately three and a half minutes. Didn't, did we get this set together or something? I remember this. Yeah, we were there with uh, Oi on Earth Day. Nice. That's There's not going to fit, I don't think. There There's bigger ones up there. These. This one's fine. There's a bigger version of that Japanese okay. plate up there. That's what I was trying to say to you. The bottom one, yeah. Just don't be careful, please. Don't be careful, guys. Yeah. yeah, don't be careful. Waiting for a full cheese melt. You have to be very patient. How about I give you this cheese stick first? Cheese stick? Nice. Was this homemade or from the SFA? Homemade. Nice. Homemade. June, say hi to your Canadian viewers, please. Hi, okay. Canadian viewers. Say something nice about Canada, June. Hi, Canada. You the best music. Say something specific nice about Canada. I'll give you some truffle hot sauce on that. You see, she can't. She's a fake Canada friend. I'm not going to compliment something I don't know. That's against my brand and my entire existence. You don't know anything about Canada? Here you go. Truffle hot nice. sauce on your little cheese stick. Amazing. Be careful, this is, it's hot. Wow, look at this plating. This is like what you get in a Michelin restaurant. <laughs> this tiny thing on the huge plate. That's still very hot. Aaron. What kind of music do I listen to? Steely Dan. That's Steely true, Dan. he does. How's my life? A it's lot fine. of it. It's fine. I'm eating delicious food with my good friend Johnson. It couldn't be better. Thank you. Well, you'll know what the cheese stick is when you see the next episode that I haven't started editing yet. Patience, my grasshoppers. Patience. Too hot to taste. Too hot to taste? Yes. Okay. 
As June and I know, flavors don't come through well if the food is too hot. All right, Justin Bieber. That's a Canada fact. What's a Canada fact? That he's from Canada. Okay. Don't apologize. That's like a such a 2012 thing is to like hate Justin Bieber. Like he's not even doing anything anymore. You didn't give me hot sauce or seasoning, so I didn't put oh, any. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Oh, Aaron. Can you... Dude, what? these are the worst chili oils I've ever tasted. From where? From the... Not, not Mike, I hope. Not Mike Chen. So, they're like supposed to be Mexican salsas. Okay. They're like so much oil and there's no flavor. We'll see about that. I'll be the judge of flavor. Yeah, that sounds like I should just get a spoon for these. Yeah, please. All the spoons are over there. Okay. Let's see what's going on here first. Um, layered with flavors and heat. We'll see. Uh, it was inspired by a dude that needed more heat from salsita and salsa gue. Great on avocado toast. Okay. It's apparently pronounced whey. Whey, all right. Well, I don't like the first thing that they suggested to use it on. <laughs> it says great on avocado toast. They know who their audience is, huh? Yep. Ingredients, olive oil. That's an interesting one for yep. chili oil. <laughs> Chilies, garlic, sesame seeds, and salt. Usually you want a neutral oil for these Correct. as well. Correct. Yeah. Olive um, oil is not very Mexican. Yeah, nor Chinese. Well, it's salsa, what is it called? It's a Mexican chili yeah. crisp. Okay, I'm getting the oil and a little bit of the taste. But yes, it is almost all oil, which is, I guess that's okay. Sometimes I want oil, like if I'm, say, doing mapo tofu. I want to, you know, the drizzle of oil over, and then for some dishes you want more of the crisp. Lagama is good about getting a good balance between the two in their jars, but this one does seem too heavy on the oil. <clears throat> All right. <coughs> I inhaled it. <coughs> yeah. All right. <clears throat> Other than inhaling it. <laughs> yeah? Mm. Yeah. It's... Can you give me the straw? Yeah, it's not great. Um... Can you do something with it? I don't even want it. I mean, I'm almost done with your oil that you gave me. Please take both of these away from me. I don't hate it as much as I thought based on what you, how you described it, but um, yeah, there's not a lot of that savoriness that None. you really, yeah. It's, there's basically, there's heat and there's oil. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Well, there's you didn't try the other one yet. The okay. other one has no heat. Oh. Low spice salsa. Well, I already know I'm not taking this. So what the hell is it? Is is this thing? just oil? Basically? It's so weird to have chili peppers not be flavorful at all, yeah. especially when they're bloomed in oil. I don't understand how that's possible. Maybe they did a poor bloom. Can I place? Can you give me the plate for a second so I can place this grilled cheese? Yes. And let me do a cheese pull right in front. Let's move over. Nice. Beautiful. Okay. Wow, there's not, yeah, there's not, it's just like paste. What the hell is this made of? Yeah, I don't there's know, There's no man. discernible chili. I really don't know what's going on there. I'm really, I'm so disappointed with that product. Oh, you know what this tastes like? What, what, what? It tastes like the, yeah, there's gotta be beans in here, right? No. No, there isn't almonds. Almonds is second Almonds. Reason. Yeah. It tastes like a nut butter. That's what it well, is. Well, it is almond. I guess you're yeah, right. I'm definitely not taking this. Because it's basically just an extremely oily nut butter. Yay. Disaster. Yeah. 
I'll use it in cooking, I guess. I'm okay with the other one, just from a purely like spice perspective. Yeah, it just adds heat, which is fine sometimes, but uh, I don't use too. Unredeemable. Are there any spices you would like to take home today? Are you missing anything in your pantry? Um, I'm current. I just finished my cardamom pods. Um, I have some cardamom pods, but I don't have a lot. You can I take it. I use them in my nighttime tea every day. Okay. I just finish those. I don't need to steal yours. I can buy. They don't need to be fancy. Just... You should probably pop by Patel's before you head back. Yeah. It'll be cheaper here than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. How's the grilled cheese, at least? Mmm. Mmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. Excellent grilled cheese. Can you taste the caramelized onions? Mm-hmm. Is it nicely salted? It is. Yeah. Would you like more truffle hot sauce? I would. Yeah, you really salvage the bread nice. from being, you know, nursing, literally nursing home sliced bread. I figured I would need it for like photo shoots if I ever develop sandwiches because I never buy bread, you know, and most people buy bread. So I want some conventional looking slices sitting in my freezer. And plus, I just don't want to go into waste. And I really don't feel like telling the staff every two weeks she doesn't want bread and then telling them again she wants bread. You know, it's just so much mm -hmm. trouble. I'm gonna go stand under the fan. Okay. Thank you for coming and visiting. I'm not leaving. I know. I'm just standing under the fan. Okay. Guys, it's so hot. It's so hot right now. Why? Is there any, uh, you have duplicates of or you specifically don't want them anymore? I have some duplicates. That you can certainly take. Okay. I'll I don't consider it. I don't not want them, but um. So if you want, you can take a purple shallot powder. I am actually yes. Anything aromatic, because I'm low on garlic powder. You want some garlic powder? Anything garlicky or you know, aromatic. -y. Uh. You mean allium? Yeah, that's what I meant. L L E L E L E. Ellie You want some toasted onion powder? Sure. Thank you. Do you want like a chopped masala blend? No, I actually have a lot of that still. I use on my uh, my mangoes and my pineapples. I have this. They're most known for their purple garlic powder. Perfect. That's yeah. That's good. Okay. I got, I got a shallot, a garlic, and an onion. Yeah, that's all. all well, of I gave you all of my aromatics, basically. Nice. Well, I don't want to take any if you still need them. I can order more. Okay. Spread the wealth. Oh Lord. This reminds me a lot of, of Urfa. The smell of the black wine. Oh, do you want to take some? I'm interested in this. Yes. Don't take the whole thing because right. it's very potent, but I can give you a little. Okay. 
Let me shake some on my slice. It's very tart. It's quite delicious. Can I give it to you in a prescription bottle? I don't mind at all. Mm. You like it? Yeah. The Black Lime is one of their best sellers. Mm -hmm. How, what is it exactly? It's literally 100% sun dried lime. Nice. Brown. One of my favorite uh, things of late is when I made prick film plat and I put whole uh, sliced lime, including the skin. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. I'm gonna do this lid upside down so that it's flush and it doesn't um, spill. Uh -huh. And then can you please Does make- it screw in that one? Yes, it's secured. Oh, okay. Live taught me this, that you can screw oh. prescription bottles upside down. This is for people with arthritis. Oh. Can you make yourself a little label so you don't forget what it is, please? Okay. Can you save some of that hot sauce for me? Yeah. Thanks. You mean hot sauce? I would like some of that. It tastes like ketchup and I like it. It does. It is a bit ketchup. -y. Thank you, Amy. Now I am chopping the carrots up to make them into pickles. The last thing I'm going to steal from you is I'll have a little more carrot. Okay, can you get a clean fork? Yes. Do you still have your little bowl? Actually, Aaron, you know what? What? Can you, you want to take that jar home? Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. I mean it. Thank you. And I'll give you a plastic bag so you can wrap it. So that it doesn't spill. Do you have another jar? I'm not taking your only jar, I hope. I can always make it, Aaron. Oh my god, Junior, you're so generous. You love it so much. I'm excited. Has anybody else tasted it? Is it just. I made some sort of gathering that I picked out earlier. Oh, and here's some plastic bags for Freddy Poop. Nice. And keep that paper towel in there so that in case it spills. Um, can I just put these plastic bags in your bag? Yeah. Isn't June so nice? Aaron tag. What is Aaron tag? Take it home and use it as a trash bag before disposing of it. This might be my mom's hair on it too. Maybe you should keep that one. I don't know. I'm gonna put trash in it too. So either way, I'm gonna put trash in it. Mom's gotta go somewhere. You like it? And you can reuse the pickle juice too. Of course, I would not waste that at all. There was a tear in the bag, so I patched it up with my face. Nice. Yeah, I'll finish that in a few days. Cool. I've torn through your uh, chili oil. June also made one of the best chili oils I've ever had. What was good about it? Um, just everything. It was exactly what you want from a chili oil. Because I obviously love hot sauce, but I don't eat chili oil for the heat. I eat it for the smoky savoriness. I'm June got that perfect with it. She did, it was the cashew one. Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that. That was also a burlap and barrel test of some sort. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm putting a rubber band over the top, try to store it upside up. Great, mm -hmm. B&B is very lucky to have you, June. And this is the one you're taking, the hot salsa? Yeah. Let me also put this in the bag. Yeah, so this is definitely my favorite jardinara ever. Uh, how many have you had? 
you had though before? Uh, not a ton, but you know, if you add up like all the ones I've had sort of as sides on charcuterie platters or in restaurants, I'd say a, a lot. Like I don't really go out of my way to buy them because I usually find them kind of boring. But June, especially with like her very liberal use of the whole peppercorns, really amped this one up. I can't take credit for that. That was all burlap and barrels pickling spice that I had to test. But you made the recipe. Correct. And you like the apples? Oh yeah. I thought the apples were a really nice touch. Mm -hmm. I really, really love uh, yeah, fruits when they're used like that. Like I was saying, lime, the lime in the prick bump block. I know that's not a weird thing. Uh, apparently it's very common in Thailand is to have whole slime including the skin in there, but it's not something you see in the US very often. Okay, your salsas have been bundled. But yeah, pickled fruits are always amazing. Like obviously pickled mangoes are famous. What other fruits are with pickled? Um, Ren, who works at Burlap and Barrel, said she she digs a uh, hearty nectarine. Mm-hmm. Basically, any fruits that are sweet and sour and crunchy. Yeah, pear is definitely, I think. Those Some do pineapple. Fun. Yeah, slide them right in. Yeah, watermelon rind, great. talk about now guys any topics we want to chat as a community since that's what we are because YouTube is social media there's time to be social again social without me. That's fine. It's all good. Anything else I can do for you while I'm here? Um, were you interested in that ordinary thing or I don't have to give it to you. I no. Okay. You said it was for sunspots. That's what they told me, but I don't actually know. If no, I've got my, I've got my regimen on. Yeah, I need a new skincare thing, or maybe I'm just getting old and it's unpreventable. But whatever. You could get super into Korean skincare. There's a whole. I was reading about this recently. They actually put much less emphasis on cleansing and washing. Uh huh. Uh, in. And I know there's a lot of Korean skincare heads out there, so correct me if I'm wrong. This was just what I was, you know, reading for a few hours on Reddit one day where all the people obsess over things. Um, <clears throat> is that you, in in the, like, you know, Western, I guess you'd call it, or like, you know, ordinary style, you cleanse pretty frequently, and then you might even use pretty strong acids like AHAs, BHAs, you know, to strip the oils and whatever, but in Korean skincare, you cleanse pretty infrequently and you use, use a mild cleanser. Uh, and then you, the masks you use are not masks to like, you know, 
rip the impurities out of your pores or whatever, but they're masks to actually calm the skin. And mm -hmm. apparently that creates healthier, you know. That's kind of what Glossier does. Yeah. So. I'm not really doing that. I'm still doing a, uh, basically a Well, full. here's what I think. I think Korean beauty is probably better for Asians. And I think probably the way that Americans do it is better for American skin, white skin, probably. Because hmm. I think there is a difference in body constitution and skin reactions, you know? How's your constitution, June? Terrible. It's brittle. Just like the US constitution. Just like my bones. That was some political commentary right there. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was pretty basic shit. You know, I. Uh, I'm just tired of all these clowns in Washington. I know. Aren't it's a real, all? it's a real circus over there. I need they to, should... I need to somehow get people to stop paying taxes on mass. Uh, I sent you that website, the tax avoiders website. Yeah, but no, we need to like. It doesn't. Make a it literally, media like, campaign. like literally everything else in the world now, it doesn't work unless everybody does it. Correct. Because literally, they're not. If everybody stops paying taxes at once, they can't put everybody in prison. Correct. That's so, why yeah. solidarity is important. How do I do this, guys? I need your help. It's time to put our community to work. I personally pay extra taxes. I pay double what I owe the government because I really, I want Ukraine to have all the bombs that they possibly could dream of. I want them to have all the bombs, all the tanks, all the fighter jets, all the long range HIMARS missiles. Would you we like to make to, the disclaimer that you're actually joking right now? We need to so load up Eastern Europe with as much heavy weaponry You're gonna get me double demonetized, <laughs> bro. You're now like doubly demonetizing me. Cause YouTube doesn't understand sarcasm. I'm, that's the that's the North mainstream liberal line is just is being uh, oh, but we want to acknowledge <laughs> that we want to acknowledge that we frame it differently you, that's what media does it frames it differently you're not going to get demonetized for saying send Ukraine all the weapons that's what that's what the consensus is that's what the <laughs> Washington wants uh, yeah yeah it's good looking carrots do you want one oh just slice just one slice thank you. Uh, well, oh, I know what I was going to do. What are you going to do? I'll be right back. Okay. What's he going to do, guys? Oh, I have to pay my dead mom's taxes, too. That sucks, doesn't it? And I will continue paying her taxes because I still haven't distributed her, her IRA accounts. And when I do, I'm going to have to pay her taxes on those accounts and pay income tax on whatever distribution I get. Oh, we both have Freddy. Look at our respective phone backgrounds. Which one's which? You picked a really shitty one. You want me to sit? You have better. I should have Fred Elwood. I like that photo. Yeah, it's funny. He has such a funny face. He does. He's out of focus. No, that's just blurry. He's not out of focus. I'm in 24 hour time. June's in stupid people time. Oh, okay. Time is stupid to begin with, so. Right, who invented time? Was it Dr. John Time, I think? Capitalism. Yeah. Am I ever going to get to cooking or just chopping today? The ancient Mayans didn't have a concept of time. The people famous for their calendars. Aaron, you need to do a live sometime so that people can get their share of Fred. I think people miss Freddy. June can come over to my place and she can do a live together with True. us whenever she wants. <laughs> put some salt over my veggies and I'm gonna let them sit for about an hour and then drain them and then I can make new giardinera or yes. I have Mama O's super spicy kimchi li sauce so I think I can just pour this over what is that Kim chili sauce. I see. So it has white vinegar, red pepper flakes, garlic, ginger juice, organic sugar, lime juice, salt, and boot jolakia powder, which I don't know. So what, what it makes is. it kimchi? Uh, I, I think they're. It's not kimchi. It's kimchili. 
So well, they're clearly in reference. There's no kimchi. fish or shrimp in here. Yeah, so, so how, it's just supposed to be like kimchi inspired, not like Yes. Oh, you... try this. This is fantastic. It's probably going to be really expensive retail price, but this is a black milk tea popcorn. It's that's like a caramel a, corn, but delicious. That's a phrase I didn't expect to hear. Big fan. Big fan. Do you like it? Yes. What makes it milk tea? It just tastes like sweet and salty popcorn. The tea comes after you swallow. First you get milk and caramel, uh -huh. and then after you swallow you get popcorn, mm -hmm. and then there's a layer of like Earl Grey tea coming. I'm still waiting. It's not hitting me, okay. but I don't have refined tastes like you. Since you cook a lot, do you want this arrabbiata sauce? Uh, only if you're not going to use it. I'll use it. Okay. You don't want to taste any more chocolates? We'll do another just for fun. I taste a little bit of that. You didn't like it. Yeah. I don't like, I actually, I've gotten, as the years went on, I've gotten a lot more basic in my chocolate tastes. I'm not a Hers not like Hershey's, that's still disgusting to me. Before you taste that like, one, I want you to taste this one. This is a Tokyo chocolate from, I guess, a district called Shirokane. It's uh -huh. called, from a shop called La Maison. Okay. It is me and Samir's favorite chocolate that we tasted yesterday, and we tasted like 20. Maximum. Oh! So good. Okay. So good. Leave it to the Japanese. Oh my god. They take the, they take the cake on everything. What? So good, right? I was literally just about to say, like, from, at the risk of complimenting TJ's again, like TJ's regular dark, not extreme dark, pound plus is ideal for me. Like I've sort of, I've sort of gotten the same way about chocolate that I have in beer, as the as the years went on. Like I used to be all about like you know, um, really interesting fancy IPAs and sours and all this shit. But now I'm just one of those guys who's like I want a beer flavored beer, and you know now I've become like I want a chocolate flavored chocolate, like just a regular ass, we're not old. too dark dark. I think that's just what happens when we're old. Yeah, so, but this one's amazing. Yeah, this is like not, it's not even, it's not like crazy, like there's nothing insane going on here. It's just sort of like the, the sort of like platonic ideal of chocolate. There's know? coffee flavor. Well, coffee, yeah, that's perfect. That's coffee like makes chocolate taste more chocolatey without Correct. making it taste. Leave like some more. of that bar for me, please. Yes, a tiny bit more. That's amazing. Wow. So do they sell in the US? Why were they here? Well, this was at the fancy food show. I think this show is kind of for industry people if they want to import mm -hmm. and retail. These are like wholesalers. Mm -hmm. It's so fucking amazing. Everything that they made. Yeah. That's amazing. The, the, especially what's good about that is the uh, is the chew. Like it has, it, it's this lusciousness. It's very luscious. They tempered it so well that it didn't yeah. even melt. No, yeah, it, it's not melting, but as soon as it goes in your mouth, it, it becomes melts. cream. Yeah. Pure cream. You'll see this in the taste test video. Me and Samira were gushing over this brand. Yeah. Have you decided where you're going to go for dinner? Thank you for inviting me over. Thank you for visiting. Giving me all these incredible things. Of Letting course. me taste my favorite jardinara ever. Wow. One of my top chocolates of all time. Wow. A uh, horrible coconut trap that you bamboozled me into. I'm sorry. Uh, what else? Let's round up what happened, the exciting events of the day. Uh, that time I showed people our, our friends on our phone. That was Don't cool. forget these. Oh, yes. And you never made yourself the label? Can you label it so you don't forget what the yes. fuck is going on in a prescription pill box? I'm just gonna assume they're zannies and pop them all. Black powdered zannies. Yeah, that's how the kids are. That's how. I ate the oats. Kids. The oats were actually fine. They were such a strange concept, but I did not get sick. So. What oats? Um, at the fancy food show, they had like a South African stall, and the stall gave a bunch of shortbreads out and stuff like that, and one of the items was pre-cooked steel-cut oats in a bag. It was really weird. Well, oh, come. Come take a look at the snacks and see if you want any. 
How did you haul all this shit back? <laughs> And then you can choose a couple. Yeah. You can share with your friend. So this I know I'm gonna like, so I'm just gonna take that with me now. Great. Gonna taste it. Um, spicy dried pineapple. That seems like a good place to start. Ginger lime. It smells amazing. It smells like a uh, it tropical. It smells drink. good. I don't know if it tastes good though. That's kind of the problem. This this smells like a tiki bar, in all the best ways. I like the texture. The flavor isn't coming no. through. What do they mean by spicy? Ginger. Oh, uh, yeah, because there's no, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna eat it's, it. Yeah, you can keep that one. It's very snackable, but not very, but I don't like very it. exciting. Yeah. It's not special. Um, June, June really uh, intrigued me with this one. Black sesame sea salt toasted nori snack bar. She described it as a seaweed granola bar. Soft granola bar. Yes, it's very soft. I don't, I'm not getting even the tiniest hint of seaweed when I inhale. Um, there was a little bit in the, a tiny, there's like the tiniest touch of ocean, the tiniest touch of ocean when you eat it, but... Give this man a job. Pay him to describe food. No, that's your job. Uh, yeah, they should have really leaned way more into the seaweedness. It's for cause... Americans. They're going to disgust themselves if they put more yeah. seaweed. Unless they add a lot more seaweed flavor to this. This is just like a regular ass expensive, like health food style from all of our... June, I think, said that she liked these a lot. Uh, tempeh chips. Yes. Tempeh, as we know, is, uh, is fermented tofu, right? Fermented soybeans, but these are made with black-eyed peas. Nice. These look very similar to just the stuff sold at, like, Indonesian street food. Yes, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. It says cheese. Cheese flavored. Didn't get a whole lot of that. I, yeah, there is cheese flavor. That's the first thing I noticed is that, it, oh, these are cheese flavored. It's good, like cheddar cheese flavored. So far, no hits. Uh, nothing blowing my mind. Not like the chocolate did. Um, peppercorn ranch, pretzel sticks, yeah. June says her life dream is to become a pretzel baker. Soft pretzel. Soft pretzel, not this. This is made in factories. Soft pretzels, obviously, are made in bakeries. Ooh, yeah, winner. If you like those, you need to take those away. Okay, why? Because I don't, I don't want all these snacks sitting here. Mm. You know, it's dangerous for me. We have a winner. Uh, I don't know the brand because it's partly cut off. Something. Pop Daddy. Pop, Pop Daddy. Pop Daddy. Peppercorn Ranch pretzel sticks, yeah. Uh, they're basically regular ass pretzel sticks, but yeah, it's the ranch coating on the outside that really, really does it for these. Hell yeah. This is a, to me, this is a, if I had the whole bag once, you know, one sitting sort of thing. It's a tiny bag. Yeah. Well. Let's see if they have another winner with this flavor. 
Beer cheese! I had beer cheese in Munich for the first time ever. It's very pungent. I was shocked by how uh, pungent actual beer cheese is. Uh, like, you know, I obviously, I pride myself on eating anything in the world except coconut. But even this was like, oh man, this is like, it wasn't too much, but it was like right on the edge of like being What did it taste pungent. like? Um, it was extreme, it tasted like extremely funky fermented cheese. Interesting. Maybe it was, oh, it wasn't in Munich. I had it in Prague. Uh, this isn't I, that, don't worry. Okay, we'll see if, it, if the flavor reminds me of that. Yeah, I see what they're going for here. This is like one, this is like 2% of beer cheese flavor. 2%. But, but it's, I can see what they're going for here. It definitely, they did good at sort of like giving it that, that sort of style. This is good too. Which would you rather I take, the popcorn ranch or the beer cheese? Your choice. Okay. I'll do the beer cheese. You can take both, please. Share it with friends. Thank you, June. You got it. Thank you for taking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like these guys. Pop Daddy. Pop Daddy gets the official air and seal approval. I have to say, pretzel sticks are my least favorite pretzel shape. Okay. My favorite hard pretzel shape is those nubbit, like nibblers. Nubbins. Nubbins. Yeah. Like the shit that peanut butter pretzels are. Well, those are pillows, but I'm talking about like the sh that general shape, but they're all pretzel. Okay. But I love peanut butter pretzels too. Yeah. You get. You guys should all visit June's house. You'll go home with such amazing riches. Come on over, y'all. Come on over. You're all invited to 72 Main Street in Flushing, New York, apartment. That is definitely my address. 12F. Accurate. Don't Google Map it. It's not on there. That's right, 16 West Elm Street in uh, Elmhurst, New York, apartment. 8B is where June lives, write that down. 8B? June's social security number, 420 6969. <laughs> okay. Yep. I don't know if that's the right number of digits for some It probably reason. isn't. <laughs> okay, I keep saying I'm going to go, but this time I'm not actually. Did you actually take everything you were going to take? Uh, I think so. Okay. I'll put the rest of your snacks back. Thank you. Snack attack. Snack attack. Mission accomplished. Can you flip the light switch off in my bedroom? Okay. Thank you. What your shirt says there. It's something Jeff got for me from Athens. Okay. I don't read Greek, so I don't know what it says. Um, but I think I looked it up after he got it for me, and it is a, I believe, referencing a right wing fascist paramilitary organization uh, in Greece. That's cool. Yes. Jeff had no idea what he was buying, uh, he just saw the Greek flag on it. And uh, he was like, Aaron will like this. <laughs> that's my, that's what that sounded like. Um, 
Um, but I think it looks cool, despite me not being a Greek nationalist. What do they believe in, the Greek nationalists? Same thing any blank nationalist mm. believes in. Shit. They believe in the supremacy and ultimate ethnic superiority of the Greek people over all other peoples. Ah. Yeah. Oh, here's another one you could try. Tell me. Okay. Well, you can try Tell me. Okay. Oh. I always think it's the word said, maybe? Henrietta said is the brand name. Oh, okay. First thought it might be error. Oh. Okay. Did you ever find your white jeans? No. I haven't been back. I, I don't really. I guess I do have time, but I just don't find time to, like, go to. Go for and you tried on my white pants and they didn't fit? No. These are good. Yeah. All, yeah, so much of the stuff at the SFA is like basically just taking a normal snack and then like adding a slightly different flavoring powder to it Correct. that you normally yeah. wouldn't find in like a supermarket. Yep. It's about the whole idea. <laughs> but sometimes it works. This one is ancho kimchi. Yeah. Eventually, we're just going to run out of, like, flavor combinations of things, and then these companies are all just going to, you know, Bye. everything's just going to be owned by Kraft or Unilever at some point. Mm. I think I'm going to put some Scrapple in that cauliflower mix. Amazing. Pickled Scrapple. Oh! You need to try this before you go. This uh, shit is amazing. You're gonna keep finding shit. I've got to try it. <laughs> New spoon, but okay. that shit is amazing. Sambal chili crunch with seaweed. Whoa. So Samira took home the one with shrimp powder, but this one is actually my favorite. It has um, seaweed and a lot of fried onions. It looks great. This is an amazing crunching, well, the, the white balance. Okay, there we go. This looks like the crunchiest thing that's ever existed, which I'm very excited about. Not picking up much from the smell, but you often don't with chili oil, because the oil sort of blocks in the smell. I'm going to put in a little bit of cumin and bay leaf in my cauliflower, garlic, and scrapple, and maybe some onions as well. Yeah, this feels... Mega crunchy, just on the spoon. Yeah. Mmm. Ooh la la. You like it? Um, oh, shit. You don't like it? No, not Whoa. as much as I hoped. It's a, a, sort of like the other one. It is missing. It's missing smokiness. You might have liked the other one that Samira took. Yeah. It's really good crunch, but it's the lowest heat level, which is obviously a problem, and then yeah, it's just, the back end flavors are fine. Uh, I'm getting a lot of seaweed on the back end, but the front the front end flavors are, there's not a lot going on there. It's just relying on the crunch to be interesting, I think. I will, I will give it credit for the crunch, it's a good crunch. Okay, thanks for trying. Yep. Honest reviews only. That's how we do it here. That's what got me in trouble when I didn't give 10 out of 10s to every single goddamn thing you made. It's so funny because at these trade shows, I was like, I'm going to make a review video of all the products. Would you like me to feature one of your products? And if so, which one? And I wonder how many of them thought, gee, what if she doesn't have a good thing to say about mm -hmm. my stuff? I do wonder, though, maybe everyone who has their own company and their own product thinks that it's like the best thing ever. Yeah, I think that even if they don't, they make themselves believe it. Interesting. Yeah. Have you ever had Scrapple before? I uh, know, but I, I bought this with you. Yeah. Do you want to try? Is that edible as is right there? I don't actually know. I can microwave you a little piece, but... I mean, if it, I don't mind tasting it now if that's how it can be. And I just I don't wouldn't, know if it's cooked. I wouldn't eat anything manufactured straight. Okay. Well, yeah. What does it say? The package doesn't say anything. It says... 
fully cooked. But oh, I don't, then I would eat it. But I don't know if it's ready to eat. Those are slightly different things. I think it isn't it the same. Whatever. I'll, I'll eat it. Let it cool off a little bit. Okay. All right, here. You know what? You want to eat it? Eat this cake. It's cold. Okay. It's mixed with a lot of like starch, right? Uh, grits, corn. Right, grits. Mm -hmm. It's like half spam and half uh, grits, which is interesting. That'll be fun. Let's put the jardinera. Ew, why would I put scrapple in jardinera? I don't know, I thought that's what you're, what do you mean? Why would I'm you? cooking cauliflower to eat right now. Oh. And I'm using up all my leftovers. I wouldn't even be in the top hundred of crazy things if I were done with food. <laughs> right, but I can't always be crazy, Aaron. The shock value gets tiring to do. Oh, somebody's having fun out there. Yeah, that ramp, that accessibility ramp is like a curse. June hates disabled people. You heard it here. No, first it's post. not even disabled <laughs> people who use it. It's for like uh, deliveries, deliveries and yeah. children. They love they love jumping up uh, and down on it. June hates children. You I do hate yeah, children. Yeah, that one she won't deny. <laughs> You know, guys, lobster is prison food, too. Used to be. Every food can be prison food. It's just what we relegate into lower class. It's all a construct. So, sure, maybe Scrapple will serve to people in prisons, but does it make it not edible? Maybe we should think about how we treat people in prisons, huh? Val says crispy fried Scrapple is the way to go. Are you getting it crispy? It kind of disintegrates. Yeah. So I'm basically making crispy meat paste in my cauliflower. Yeah. Maybe if you want it crispy, you gotta treat it sort of like soft tofu. Yeah. Are you gonna go, bro? Are you uh, gonna yeah. Well, we can, you keep finding interesting things. I mean, my house is a very interesting yes. place. June June has definitely the most like interesting food per square inch of any house in Queens, I would venture. It's my entire life. Yeah. This is all I have. Uh, you got grandma, you got... Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, there's other stuff too, I'm sure. Fantastic. There's other stuff too. I can't wait to go back and rewatch this live and see what people said when I said I wish my grandma would die. I actually will, will rewatch this live and read all the comments because I think those comments are extremely therapeutic. Those are like very rare moments where people actually give me incredible advice that really help my mental health. So thank you all for chiming in. Do you at least watch them on rewatch them at 1.5 or something? Yeah, okay. for sure. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye, Aaron. There. Fist bump the people. Fist bump the people. That there you go. Say bye, Aaron. Hi, June. Bye. Hi, the people. Uh, let the door go gently, please. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, it's... If it does, I'll simply the door. Okay, it's shut down for now? Yep. Okay, thank you. I might have to plug you guys in. Do you want to watch me cook more things, or do you want to be set free after... Did you tell them uh, about okay. the light turning on by itself? Oh yeah, I told them about the ghost. They know about the ghost. Hi, June. Bye, Aaron. Thanks for visiting. Come see Fred soon, okay? Okay. Tell him I said hi, that old jerk. I don't think Fred would have liked that trip very much. Fred hates traveling. He hates his carrier. He hates moving. It terrifies him.
And in this heat on the subway, nobody wants to be there. That was definitely Aaron stomping down the ramp. That's hilarious. He would do that. Let me go get my charger. Anyway, today was the most Monday of Mondays that I've experienced in a while, but could always be worse, huh? Also, I have an update on the Pixel 6a. It continues to overheat, extremely overheat on my Skype calls with Uncle. So I really don't recommend that call or that phone rather. I'm streaming on my Pixel 2 XL. It is hot as balls but it is still streaming, knock on wood. Maybe we'll go for a four hour live today. <laughs> everything on her own um, I think was just so bad it was so bad the record for the longest live I believe was like a six hour stream of me just um, shredding paper at my dead mom's house kind of insane repair so she ended up darning it 
and look how big the piece of darning was. She basically made me half a new sock. Um, it's not very com comfortable to wear, honestly, because it's not a straight piece of fabric on the sole of my foot. But hey, it gave her something to do. I really don't recommend that you polymerize the oil in a cast iron pan in the summer. It's gonna smoke up your entire house. It's really not wise to do it right now. But the way you polymerize oil is you have to hit beyond the smoking point. So depending on what oil you use, you should Google the smoking point of that oil. What do you mean shame grandma still wants to feel useful? Why is that? What are you guys saying even? I don't even understand. I'm gonna go in with some umami blend salt mix. Um, Cooking, I guess. I should definitely use up all these vegetables sooner rather than later. I'm pretty good. Good job, me. You want a 360 of my hairstyle? Let's not, no, let's not mod anyone just yet. I want people to kind of learn about how to deal with each other without having to have others step in and make decisions for them. Um, but if they prove to be hostile, sure, mod them. But for now, let's just try to talk it out. Um, as long as I work for Burlap and Barrel, I do get free spices, yes. It is a perk. And I'm pretty happy working there. It's a pretty awesome company to work for. Um, I said my number one, my only rule really for leaving Delish was that I won't really find it possible to work for assholes anymore. So 
That's currently my rule. That's probably why it's gonna be a very hard thing for me to find full-time jobs because most places are assholes. <laughs> but I'm pretty glad that I get to fulfill that requirement now for as long as I can afford it. What a luxury it is to not have to work for assholes, guys. Hmm? I want to see a world where we can all get to not work for assholes. I think every day about people who have to work for companies like Spectrum. My God. The horror. We're gonna continue cooking. We're gonna add a little bit of olive oil and garlic and the rest of our caramelized onions. And we're gonna go in with more cauliflower, more carrots and chickpeas. And we're gonna add some tomato sauce that's been opened in my fridge. Um, and we're just gonna make a little vegetarian marinara mix, I think. I'm going to try to chop the carrots fairly small so that they're like itty bitty. watching it really it get, it makes me very happy to be able to make my own videos at my own pace and to share it with people gives me a project to do that's not solely targeted for money making um, which you know it's nice to be able to have a hobby where it brings in some ad revenue income but I'm not relying on it and I don't expect it and it's also very rewarding to have people who enjoy watching it. That's kind of the whole point of life, right? Is feeling like you're useful um, and a part of a community. And I guess that's what this is for me now. world's nicest viewers. Incroyable. If you're an asshole to yourself, yeah, that's why we have group therapy together. We're kind of all assholes to ourselves, but we normally aren't doing it for nothing. I think we've been kind of socialized to be assholes to ourselves because that's the way that capitalism tricks us into being more productive for it, you know? The system likes to have us cannibalize ourselves. So it takes a lot to finally learn how to not cannibalize ourselves because that's most of what we've been taught. So just be patient. And also, I think it helps to have a clearer view of what your objectives in life are. Maybe you've been told that you should be achieving a certain goal, but maybe you don't actually want that goal for yourself. That's possible.
Can you guys hear that music that's coming through my window from someone else's window, potentially? It's like incredibly loud. Anything for you guys. Except not, psych. I don't even know you, but hello, Matthew. <laughs> for burlap and barrel so if you guys sign up for the burlap and barrel newsletter most of them are mostly written by me but it is a team effort so it's not a hundred percent my work this is what I love working with burlap and barrel is almost everything is a team effort everybody has their specialty on the team but it's oftentimes a very collaborative process so even when it is kind of stressy it's not alone, stressy. It's communal problem solving. We're going to be using Matriarch spicy arrabbiata sauce. This has tomato sauce, which is plum tomatoes, tomato paste, fire roasted garlic with salt, and tomato puree, and onions, carrots, olive oil, garlic, salt, crushed red pepper, and basil. 
Matriarch is on a mission to decrease greenhouse gases and increase deliciousness. So basically they use like imperfect tomatoes, but Samira made a really good point yesterday on our review video that like, don't most tomato sauce companies probably use imperfect tomatoes? I don't know, I don't know. But um, they have US grown tomatoes in this carton and Apparently their packaging has 81% lower, lower carbon footprint than cans or glass jars, but I prefer glass jars because I can reuse glass jars. I have smart friends. I have friends who do critical thinking. I appreciate that about friends when they can think better than I can. Let's see what slices we can put in here. Yum, 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 yum. I'm going to go for like a Spanish vibe with this. So I think some Spanish smoked paprika would do great. Herb de Provence. some of the oil in this chili oil that nobody likes. Scrapple on the bottom of this pan is browning, which I think is going to add some amazing smoky porky flavors. So I'm pretty excited. We're going to add in our chickpeas. And our tomato sauce. Not a lot of it in here.
I didn't get high on a live recently. I decided not to do it. Which I think was the right decision, am I right guys? some of my food. I'm getting a little hungry. pasta. Who wants to go sit with me elsewhere away from the music so I don't get demonetized as much, huh? Let's eat something after I check my Instagram. A viewer just wrote, your discussion at around a minute and 40 of your latest YouTube video 
perfectly encapsulates the reasons why capitalism sucks as a model for the majority of people in a society to live decent, secure, happy lives. Greed is ending us. Greed is ending us! But we're buying into it. That's the problem. Wow. I do like my food. It is very cumin-y and it adds a certain kind of um, slickness to the gamey, oily scrapple. I think I could use some black pepper. Quite easily fixed. Mm. Mm. Scrapple, cauliflower stems, olive oil, and some caramelized onions with cumin and bay leaf. And umami blend. Quite delicious, if I may say so myself. This bowl was already dirty, so I'm using it to eat. Let's see how our pasta is doing. Guys, I think I'm gonna um, peel the carrots and maybe shred them. And I think I wanna make some carrot cake. Which is a terrible idea because I should not be baking in this temperature. But I really want carrot cake, you know? Not today. I'm not gonna bake it today because I'm not insane. But eventually, I would like to. So I think that's the last thing I'll do today is I'm gonna peel those carrots. And I'm gonna eat this apple. This is a pink lady from the farmer's market. Not great, because it was a discount bag. I also 
don't need this bowl to make yokiao dough for grandma, which I completely forgot about until just now. Whoops. Somebody is pumping those 90s classics today. We're definitely going to get demonetized if I don't keep talking. That's hilarious. Carrot mug cake? Yeah, we could make a microwave cake. That's possible for sure. I have thoughts and I don't think I agree with everyone who I've heard from. So I want to see if anybody agrees with me. Distressing, but not in an engaging way. I would agree with that. Yeah. I also just don't like the style it's shot in. The passage of time feels very weird. It feels like a whole year passes in a season but we only see it in like five minute segments. And so it just feels unreal, a lot of it. not come back. Uh-uh. I've literally never seen that happen. The pay is too shit and the egos are too big. it really does not matter if you watch the Lish videos or not. You understand that, right? There are bigger fish to fry, like not paying your taxes.
mean, the yelling is pretty accurate to restaurant life, if I may be honest. There's a lot of, like, emotional abuse and um, people who need therapy in restaurants. Influencers are there to influence you to spend money. That's why. That's their whole purpose. They must support the system because they can only influence you according to rules that are already existing. They are not trying to reinvent the wheel. They are trying to make the wheel indestructible so that we are all hamsters running away on it at higher and higher and unsustainable speeds. funny I could swear I turned off like the live filtering of comments on YouTube settings but maybe it's just a false choice maybe they tell you you can choose and then when you choose they do whatever they want to do anyway because I don't think I clicked on the auto automatic filter for live comments illegal to play music this loud that your neighbors can hear it clearly, that their live stream viewers can hear it clearly, but lots of things are pretty illegal, I guess, and lots of things that shouldn't be illegal are pretty illegal, so nothing makes sense. Okay. All right, we're done with carroting. Fantastic. Slowly but surely making my way. to-do list for today. Cannot wait to take a shower after this. You know, laws might be moral, but also no, because look at the Supreme Court rulings this week. I don't think so. 
I think morality is kind of dead at this point. And so is justice. Drop the carrot in between the oven. That's an offering to the ancestors. One stingy carrot disc for the ancestors. Lots of mush is in store for me this week. I am delighted. Every time I eat this, I'm gonna melt some mozzarella on top. My life will be complete. I will be so happy. Taste test it. Pretty good. Yum. 
jars. What is molly coddles? I've never heard of that word before. Somebody teach me something, please. Wait, I'm gonna do one jar each of the kimchi, and then I'm going to do some jardinera, but I need to pull up my jardinera recipe first. Huh, that's fascinating. Thank you for the language lesson. Never heard of that word before. That's an interesting one. Wonder what the etymology of that is. Smells very spicy. I thought it was going to sink down a lot better, but I think I condensed it too well. So in the meantime, let me pull up my jardinera. I'm supposed to put garlic in here, but I'm going to skip it this round. I'm just not feeling it. A little bit of sugar. We can do that.
We're gonna use this pickling starter. I really do recommend this if you like making pickles. The the mixture comes with fermented hot pepper flakes, hand batch red jalapeno, sourced from Atlanta, with black pepper, coriander, allspice, and fermented white pepper. My computer's about to run out of battery, so let's do this quick. I'm supposed to be using distilled white vinegar, which I actually don't know if I have. Shit. So I guess we'll go with a combo of rice wine and apple cider. Mmm, that's sad. I wish I had white vinegar. White vinegar is my favorite vinegar to make pickles with. For sure. I think I'll do the rice wine on the cauliflower and the apple cider on the carrots. Life is always about shoving cauliflower into a jar. I don't know what life you've been leading. Then olive oil time. But actually, 
actually, before I put in the olive oil, ooh, that's a leaky bottle. We gotta fix that. I have to give it a shake to distribute the sugars a little bit. It's all on the bottom. Yes, indeed, people are talking. <sighs> Might have to take some of this out. I don't think this lid is on tight enough. I think you can go overboard with the stuffing. Wonderful. We made pickles. Yay. Yeah, you can definitely reuse the pickling liquid, of course. Label those in a second. Our pasta is done to mushy perfection. Wonderful. Heat off. I'm gonna wash my knife a little bit. I think we have about 30 minutes left to the live, so. eat the pasta, I have to make the yokel dough, and I have to put more kimchi <sighs> liquid in those pickle jars. extracted water out of the pickles by salting them with water uh, by salting the vegetables first so it pulled out a lot of water content already
Somebody buy me new vinegar, please. Treat me to some vinegar. JK, I have money. I'm a grown ass woman who don't need no free vinegar money, okay. dough. Here we go. I actually don't have cornstarch, so this will be interesting. I'm going to use a little bit unbleached flour and a little bit of bleached flour so that we can even out the protein content. Basically, the cornstarch helps the donuts get a little bit crispier and it reduces the gluten development a little bit. I think I want to transfer this into a pint. This oh god, it's so hot. Why is it so hot? Probably because I've been cooking forever. Jason, it's okay. We know you like Aaron, and Aaron's gone, so now you just have to go to your backup girls. But you know what? I'm done being a backup girl. That's it. I'm done with you. I want a divorce. Who else wants a divorce? Know your worth, ladies. Break your heart, Jason. Come on, girlfriend.
true. That's why I couldn't date Aaron either. Steely Dan is where I draw the line. Let's be honest, Aaron's real soulmate needs to love Steely Dan as much as he loves Steely Dan. And I'm just not it. We have accomplished a lot today. Thank you guys so much for joining. Happy 4th of July for those of you who are celebrating. We are not gonna celebrate the history of America's independence. We're gonna celebrate the history of your independence. We are all coming into our own being slowly, gradually, every single day, every moment of the day, with every trial and error, with every challenge, with every annoyance, we learn more about ourselves. May we proceed into our future days with confidence, with self-love, with love for everything because we are everything. We are also nothing at the same time. So humble yourselves, which is also the best form of self care. If you humble yourselves, you learn what uselessness ego serves in this life and all the lives to come, if there are any. For what we know is we do not know, but there is always bread. Unless you're celiac, then you don't have bread, and I'm really sorry for your existence. Um, but I guess I'll sign off now, because my computer's about to die. Oh, wait, I have to eat my pasta. I have to eat my pasta. Then I have to melt Mott's cheese over it. greatest joy in life is just watching mozzarella melt into your meal, having everything come up to the right temperature, getting that little wispy cheese pull that doesn't make you feel gluttonous and yet it makes you feel satisfyingly grounded and sexy and fulfilled. None of the decisions matter when you see that cheese pull. The cheese pull means you exist, you indulge, not too much, but enough. slightly under seasoned so I might put some um like Italian seasoning but better. It has everything you want. 
This has a little bit of heat. Not too much. A little bit of salt, a lot of herbs. I'm also gonna add in a smidge more peppercorn in there, I think. But all in all, good job me. I have now enough food to last me for three days. There we go. Life is complete. I am happy. I hope you guys enjoy the new edited video. I'm going to start working on the next edited video for y'all and for myself. Always do everything for you first. Bye.